Come, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. If you are there, I said, Praise the Lord. Once again, tonight we come together because he said, Lose him and let him go. Tonight, every yoke it will break, all the shackles it will shatter in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. You are great, a wonderful God, an unchangeable God, a God that is still working wonders today as in the days of old. And Lord, we pray tonight, everyone here in any kind of bondage, loose them and let them go free. Confirm your power, your miracle in every life tonight, here at the Alpha location, and there, online, anywhere, everywhere, we're connected together in Jesus' name. We already know that it is done. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. God has blessed you. You can see now in the blessing of the Lord tonight. We're looking at Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. Look at verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, it doesn't say the woman saw Jesus, but Jesus saw her. Look up there. Look up, look up. As you look up, you cannot see him, but he can see you. He's looking from heaven and he's looking at you. He's piercing eyes. He's penetrating eyes. And his eyes that makes all things possible is looking at you now. He sees me. He sees me. And when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him. You know, there have been other people been reading about. They went to Christ. They went to Jesus. They thought. But this woman was bent down. I could not look up. I could not see what was before her. But because Christ saw her, the Christ of compassion, he called her unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Brother, sister, boy, girl, man, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. That's what we're looking at tonight. The message is the privilege of being loosed from infirmity. The privilege is your privilege. It's the redemptive right. It's the family right. Now we belong to the family of God. And the family right and our birth right and our redemption right is that we lose from every infirmity and from every iniquity and from every inability. Three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, we're looking at daughter of Abraham loosed from the spirit of infirmity. Number two, son of Abraham loosed from the shackles of iniquity. Number three, the subjects of the Almighty loosed from the stage of inability. Look at number one. Number one, daughter of Abraham, loosed from the spirit of infirmity. I read that again in Luke chapter 13 verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which was, which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years they might call it any name 
You might say it's a kind of um, undeveloped spinal cord. They might say it is a kind of, uh, you know, difficulty in the spinal cord. They might call it any name, but Jesus knew the source is a spirit. And he called it a spirit of infirmity. And the woman had been bound for 18 years in that condition. You know, sometimes the hand is just like that. And it cannot move. It's a spirit of infirmity. The leg there might be so curved. They cannot straighten out. They call it different names. And Jesus said, a spirit of infirmity. It may be that the ears are deaf. And they cannot hear. And they have some technical medical name. But Jesus said, it's a spirit of infirmity. You might have eyes and your eyeballs are as good, as, as wonderful as any other person's eyeball, but you cannot see. And Jesus said that infirmity, the underlying factor and the source and the power is a spirit. He says it's a spirit of infirmity. You might have something they call incurable. And that incurable disease has been there. You've gone for checkup and they said they cannot see anything. You know? But you say I'm feeling the problem. I'm feeling the pain. And they say okay what are you looking for? Are you looking for leave of absence in your place of work? And so you come. You want to have people. You say no. I'm really feeling the problem. Jesus said, it's a spirit of infirmity. Five years, seven years, ten years, eighteen years, thirty-eight years, doesn't matter. Tonight, it will lose you. It will set you free. Because it says, and it was bowed down. And could not, in no way, could not lift up herself. And then the verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, when Jesus sees you, something good will happen. Now don't wait to see him. The woman did not see him, but Jesus saw her. And even though you may not see him in the physical, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. It's right before you there. And when we mention his name and you believe that name, it will touch you. And it says, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed. From thine infirmity. Look at verse 13. In verse 13. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight. And glorified God. Immediately she was made straight. All the coverture. Everything the bed. Everything rectified immediately. Like it will happen in your life tonight. When we mention the name of Jesus and we say, You are loose, you find that eternal hand, that supernatural hand will touch you tonight, and every infirmity, everything will vanish straight away, and you will glorify. God. Look at verse 14. It says in verse 14, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. There are people who honor tradition more than miracle. There are people who honor religion more than salvation. There are people that honor what her fathers did what her parents did and her forefathers, and they honor that above the present day manifestation of the power of God. There are people that honor their denomination more than and above the glorious manifestation of the power of God. And they're still there. But you know in this story that we're reading, the woman didn't get inside the clutches and the claws 
of the religion. Uh, the woman <laughs> just concentrated on Jesus. When you focus your mind and your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, his power will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. The woman heard what they were saying, and the woman knew what was going on, and she said, I leave that between Christ and the Pharisees, between Christ and the people in the synagogue. That's not my concern. All I want to have is lose her and let her go. And you'll have it in Jesus' name. Uh, oh, they, they, they discuss religion. <laughs> That's not your problem. They discuss theology. That's not your problem. And they discuss the demon and the way a preacher should stand. He should stand still. He shouldn't move about. That's not your problem. That's their problem. They can discuss their theology and they can discuss their mode of operation. But you, all you want is losing. I said, all you want is lose him and let him go. All she wanted was lose her and let her go. And it says, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in the which men ought to walk. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the sabbath day and the woman the woman didn't talk but if she wanted to talk she would have been saying i've come more than six days i've come more than 360 days i've been coming and coming and coming 18 years and you people did nothing. And now I came when Jesus was in town. And now you come when the healer is on ground. And now you come when Jesus Christ, who will heal, who will lose, who will deliver, is here. The one that will save is here. You have come on the right time. Right day. Uh, that, that, that ruler of the synagogue said, Come another day. But Jesus is not going to stay here on earth forever. He's in fact, he's going to Jerusalem and he will be crucified. And then he will rise from the dead. He will get to heaven. Now that Jesus is here, I am here too. I am here too. The Savior is here. I am here to you. The deliverer is here. I am here to you. And because he's here and you are here, he will lose you and let you go. Look at verse 15. Verse 15. And the Lord, the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite. Now, Hypocrisy is not written on anybody's forehead. Hypocrisy, you know hypocrisy by their utterance, by their word. There's insincerity there. There is pretense there. But how are you going to involve your life with hypocrites? Their actions are actions of hypocrisy. Their statements and utterances are statements and utterances of hypocrisy and their way of reasoning. Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath day. That's when you come. Everything they say is based on tradition and hypocrisy. Why are you going to bother yourself? And the hypocrite never heals anybody. The hypocrite never changes any life. And so you don't want to bother yourself by those hypocrites. They want to find fault in everything that Christ does and that Christ is still doing, that Christ will continue to do. And Jesus said, now understand, there are things that Christ will say. I don't have to say. Christ said, thou hypocrite. The woman didn't say, thou hypocrite. He is Lord. He is God, the Son. He is Emmanuel. He is the judge of all the earth. Leave that to him. Don't judge the people. Don't judge the religious leaders. If they are hypocrites, leave that to Christ. You came for miracle. What did you come for? Power. Manifestation. 
Lose him, let him go. That's what I came for too. Do you come for the same thing I came for? No. Yes. It says, thou hypocrite, thou dost not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, a Jewess, somebody in the nation of Israel, and the Lord had given the promise that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and you will observe to do what he has commanded you. I will not bring any of these diseases upon you, which have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee, daughter of Abraham. Healing belongs to you. Son of Abraham, healing belongs to you. And when you are bent now, you are not a property of the devil that he'll send the spirit that will bind you and hold you down. And Christ, the mediator, and Christ, the healer, and Christ, the deliverer, redeemer, is here tonight. He will lose you and let you go. Before I leave that point, I want to tell you that Satan... The devil whom Satan has bound. Satan, the devil, does not only bind the backbone. He binds the mind. He binds the sight. He binds the insight. He binds the reasoning faculty. A person is reasoning in a way that you know he's bound. Looking down, bending down, bending down the mind. The soul. I cannot think any other way. And the way he has been thinking for those 18 years, they are the ways that does not give him victory and power and breakthrough. And yet, the mind is bound. The soul is bound. The reasoning faculty is bound. The hearing is bound. The insight is it's bound and he cannot see beyond everything he's been saying for the past 18 years. And the thing does not yield any positive result. Praise the Lord Christ, the liberator, is here tonight. He will release you in your body, in your eyes, in your ears. In your mind, he will release you from everything that binds you in Jesus' name. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Look at that. I didn't even know that today, Saturday, Sabbath day, you are loosed in Jesus' name. He sets you free. And not only, not only that woman, everyone that comes to Christ tonight, and everyone that says, I know you are the only power and the only authority and the only liberator that can set me free. And I come tonight, it will set you free. I, I want to tell you, you know, when, we, uh, when people just read the Bible, bound by Satan, bound by sickness, bound by anger. Uh, you know, there are some people, they have anger, they don't understand that anger does more terrible thing for you that it does to the person you are angry with. The person you are angry with is enjoying his life, is eating, is sleeping, and is attending function and all, but you are bound by anger. And the anger will not allow your brain to think, will not allow your mind to look forward. And you are angry, you are angry, bound by anger. How many years now? And when anger binds us, it makes us unproductive. There are people that are bound by terror. 
terror, fear. And the fear binds them. They can, other people are going out. Other people are getting things done. Other people, they say there's a lion in the way. I just came through. I didn't see any lion. They say there's danger in the way. I just went through there. And I didn't see any danger. Ah, but if I go, I, I know I am is bound by terror. And I pray that tonight you are loose in Jesus' name. There are people who are bound by, before I tell you, they go to get their pay. And as they get their pay, they are coming back. Wife waiting at home, children are waiting at home. We need money to buy food. And we need money to buy, uh, to pay school fees of children. Before he gets home, he branches at the bar. And he drinks and drinks and drinks. And it's like that every month. It's been like that now for how many years? So many years. There are people that are bound by alcohol. There are people that are bound by evil. They know that this evil will damage their lives, will torment their lives, will ground their lives. And yet, they are bound. You're free tonight. The Lord will set you free. And whatever it is, you know, you have a great goal and a great vision, and you're looking up there, you want to get to the top and the peak of the mountain. But there's something in your life, and it, not a non-essential, something not important, and that thing always comes, always comes, always comes, and then grounds you. And you cannot move forward. That's the spirit of infirmity. And the Lord comes tonight, He comes to set you free. He comes to set me free. Say it aloud. Let any force, any personality around you hear. He has come to set me free. He will set you free. Hey, look, at, look at Mark chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 32. Mark chapter 7, verse 32. And they bring unto him one that was dead. And I had an impediment in his speech. And they besought him to put his hands upon him. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and he took him aside from the multitude. He took him aside from uh, the multitude. There are times the Lord will want to take you aside from the multitude. Why? So that you will not be thinking like the multitude is thinking. They think in unbelief. He wants you to think in faith. He takes you aside from the multitude. There are times that the facial expression of the multitude might intimidate you. And because of that, you cannot take the right decision and it takes you aside from the multitude. There are times the multitude, they have their own peculiar concentration. They're not thinking of healing. They're not thinking of deliverance. They're not thinking of the miracle power of Christ. And the Lord will take you aside from them. Every influence that will influence you negatively, that you will not receive your miracle, he'll take you aside. And he put his finger into his ears and his speech and touched his tongue. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, and looking up to heaven, he sighed and says unto him, Ephatha. What does that mean? He was, he was not talking to you. He was talking to the Father. When we pray, you may not understand everything we say in the prayer. Doesn't matter. We're talking to God. You are the, he is the giver and you are the receiver. And Jesus said, that is to say, be open. Your door will open. Your eyes will open. Your ears will open. Your heaven will open. Because Jesus 
said so. And then in verse 35, it says, And straightway his ears were opened. And the string, look at this, and the string of his tongue was loosed. And he speak plain. That's why I tell you, the backbone loosed, the tongue loosed, the ears loosed, and everything that is bound in your life loosed in Jesus' name. Look at verse 37. Verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished. Tonight, it will amaze you. It will astonish you. Saying, he has done all things well. Look at my brother there in your life. He has done all things well. My sister there in your life, he has done all things well. That also that binds you, binds you to food every hour. He has done all things well. That cancer that binds you and you are there, you are bound to pain. He has done all things well. And the poverty that binds you, you cannot do what you want, you cannot eat what you want, you cannot drink what you want. That poverty, you are loose tonight in Jesus' name. He said, he has done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Look at point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the son of Abraham. We've seen the daughter of Abraham. Now we come to the son of Abraham. Loosed from the shackles of iniquity, infirmity, iniquity. And now we look at Luke chapter 19. We're looking at verse 5. In Luke chapter 19, verse 5, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him. Did you hear that? He sees you in your need. He sees you in your passion, in your eagerness. I want to see Jesus. That thought in your heart will make him to look at you and he will see you. Everyone that wants to see Jesus, they like brittle. Everyone that wants to see Jesus, the Savior. Anyone that is saying, I'm fed up with this kind of life. I'm tired of this kind of life. And I've gone here and gone there. I even paid money to, you know, those people that said they can deliver me from this, you know, avarice or whatever, covetousness. And the thing did not work. And I'm now I get to the final bus stop. And I want to see Jesus. Praise the Lord tonight. This is your night. You'll see Jesus. And what you couldn't break away from by yourself. Tonight... You are loosed. And Jesus saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Make haste and come down. Now there are people, before the prayer begins, they are eager. I want to see Jesus. Before the prayer comes, before the invitation comes, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to have a new life. Now, the opportunity comes and they're dragging their feet. And they're looking sideways. They're looking back. Should I? Should I not? Make haste. Your salvation has come today. Make haste. Your redemption has come today. And when it says, put up your hand or stand up, make haste. Jesus said, don't stay on the tree there. You understand? If you stay on the tree there, the evidence of salvation will not be revealed. Just staying on the tree there. You have to come down. You have to live among people. And you have to be among the people you are before. Then you will see the change and the joy and the transformation. They will know that salvation has come. Why do we live here and go back home? Isn't it good for us to remain here? No, because nobody will see the evidence of that salvation. 
of that repentance, of the gospel, the goodness of God that you have received, we go back home. We come down from the high tower of, uh, you know, the revival. And then we go, we come down to the world around us. And people around us can see that this is what you have got. You will get something tonight. And said, Zacchaeus, make his and come down for today. I must abide at thy house. Somebody say amen. amen. Zacchaeus was not looking for that. All he wanted to do was to see Jesus. And Jesus said, that's right, that's right. I will give you more than the earth can offer you. Salvation. Did not even think or know about salvation is going to give you tonight. You know, some people, when you hear salvation, raise up your hand and say, I didn't come for that. Zacchaeus did not come for that. Zacchaeus did not know anything they call redemption. He wasn't coming for forgiveness. He wasn't coming for a change of life. He wasn't coming for salvation. What you have not come for, that inner peace of mind, the Lord will give unto you. But you must make haste and come down. And Jesus said, I must. Think about that. I must save you tonight. That's my duty. That's my job. And it will be done tonight. When God looks at me and he says, I must. There's no other thing to do. This is what he must do. I must abide in your heart today. Because when he abides in your heart, you carry him home and you get him a new heart. A loving heart. A changed heart. A transformed heart. And people see smile on your face. You've always been frowning. You've always been getting angry. You've always been fighting. And you beat that helpless woman, your wife, for nothing. And you beat those children as if, is this man our daddy? Why? You see always angry. But now you meet Christ you will take the love of Christ back home. Amen. You take the joy of salvation back home. And when you, when you come and the children, oh, they want to run and hide behind the door. I don't want him to see me as a false child and knock my head. You say, come, come, come from behind the door. Something happened to your daddy. Salvation came to your daddy. And then the wife, already trembling, I don't know where I will put the plate of food, where I will put my feet, and the man will be angry. And the man said, my, my wife, put it anywhere. Your husband has got something from Christ. You get something tonight. I said you get something tonight. And look at verse 6. In verse 6, and he made haste. And he came down and received him. Not Peter, not Mary. He received him, Christ the Savior, Christ the Lord, joyfully. And then verse 7, in verse 7, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Now, you understand? Zacchaeus, a rich man, and I got his money in dubious ways. In the past, nobody ever would talk to him to his face and say, Zacchaeus is a sinner. The man will get angry. And the man could do anything and bring some forces to deal with those people. But now you understand. The chaos came. He received the Savior joyfully. And he received the joy of salvation. And the joy of salvation was so much, he didn't even mind what the people were saying. They called him sinner. He didn't reply to them. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, not unto them. 
not unto the people calling him names, not unto the people that would have aggravated his emotion of anger. And Zacchaeus said unto the Lord, he said, Lord, he called him Lord, you are my Lord now. Money was his Lord. Covetousness was his Lord. Whatever he will get by cheating, that overwhelmed him. He never thought about anyone or anything else. But now Jesus, the Savior, was his Lord. He said, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. Lord, I want to tell you, I never thought of the poor in my life. I never thought of, you know, giving something to the poor. They are poor. I am rich. They are lazy, um, hardworking, they are unfortunate, I am fortunate, and they are unprofitable, I am profitable to myself and my family. That's, he was only thinking about himself. But now that salvation came, he thought of the people that were suffering. And the Lord did not tell him that. It's the change, it's the transformation that came in his heart, that brought that. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I took a lot of things from different people. I saw them crying and I said, who cares? I, I even had them cursing me. I said, who cares? I had them saying, you will not enjoy this thing. You are stealing from me. You took my land. You took my house. You took this. And he never cared. But when the Savior entered in his heart and when new life came unto him, he said, Lord, you know, I saw them crying. I saw them suffering. I didn't care. But now that the Savior is going to my house and his salvation is in my heart, if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. Amen? Amen? When is your salvation? Now, this day. And when is your forgiveness? Now, this day. If Zacchaeus got it, you will get it. And it's the same thing that he did, you've done. You came all the way from your village, from your town, and you came all the way, and you paid the fear. You said, I want to go to Jesus. And we call it crusade, but really, if it's a political gathering, you will not come. If it's another kind of gathering, you will not come. You came because, you know, we'll talk about Jesus. We'll reveal Jesus. We'll lift up Jesus. Jesus in that place. That's why you came exactly, exactly what Zacchaeus did. He came and he got salvation. You have come, you will get salvation. And it says today, this day, is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. A son of Abraham. How do I become a son of Abraham, Abraham believed the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And then we we'll walk by the same faith, and we say, God, my creator, become my redeemer. You said, your only begotten son, to take me away from my iniquity. Here I am, save me, Lord. And Abraham believed the Lord, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And you believe the Lord, and you believe the Lord. This day is salvation come to this house. Zacchaeus, how do you feel when you heard salvation is come? He says, I don't go by feeling, I go by faith. He said so. He said, salvation has come. I didn't have salvation before, so I don't know how salvation feels. I didn't have salvation before. I didn't know what emotion comes with salvation. I didn't have salvation before. I didn't know whether it's pinching or whatever that comes with salvation. But I know Jesus said it. And because Jesus said it, salvation is come to this house. I have salvation. 
I have salvation. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's all I have. That's all I hear. And I call on the name of the Lord. And he says, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's what I hear. It's not feeling. It's not emotion. It's not pinching. It's not seeing bright light. It is the word that he has said. This day is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. Salvation comes to you tonight. Everyone that will receive and believe will have, will possess the salvation of the Lord. You are the candidate for his salvation. Amen. Amen. I come to point number three here. Point number three, subjects of the Almighty loosed from the state of inability. Infirmity, inability. The woman was unable to raise up herself. That's the state of inability. Iniquity, in the case of Zacchaeus, it was a wicked man, a covetous man. He was a thief. He stole from different people. He had a mind that didn't feel any emotion, anything. Whenever he tormented or tortured people, inability. Now, whatever the inability in our lives, in your lives, the Lord will lose you from every inability. And look at this in 2 Kings, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You understand? You are now the temple of God as you believe. See, as I believe, I become the temple of God. What would you think if? As you enter the church, the church building, you see idol there. And you see all the things that idol worshippers that they do around that idol. And this is a church building, temple of God. Now, you are the temple of God. What do you think angels will think? What do you think God the Father will think? God the Son, God the Holy Ghost will think? If there's idol in your heart, if there is that idolatrous tradition in your home, what do you think heaven will think? If that idolatrous practice is in your practice, in your character. The same thing was seen when we see idol in the church building. God forbid it will not happen. Idol will not be in your heart. Shine will not be in your home. And all the things associated with idolatry will not remain in you in Jesus' name. It says, as God has said, I will dwell in them. The Lord in his power will dwell in you. And you know, every time, if any idol and the ark of the covenant, if they are in the same place by the morning, that idol will fall to the ground. And if God is in your heart, greater than the ark of the covenant in the Old Testament, if there's any idolatrous practice there, everything has to go out immediately in Jesus' name. God says, I will dwell in them. That's the Father. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in. The Father in you. The Son in you. And then he says, The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, he will come to you whom the world cannot receive. But you see him, you know him, for he is with you and shall be in you. Where the Father, 
the Son, the Holy Ghost dwell, idol will not dwell there. Magic will not dwell there. Talisman will not dwell there. The certificate of secret society will not dwell there. The garment of idol worship will not dwell in your house anymore in Jesus' name. Today, today, you become a totally new creature. I will dwell in them. And I will walk in them. And I will be their God. And it shall be my people. People of God. What are they? People of God. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17. Verse 17. It says, Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Tonight, the Father is waiting to receive everyone. He will receive you. He will welcome you into his kingdom. And then it says in verse 18, it says, And will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty are you hear your amen yeah. today liberation has come for you yeah. to every son the son of abraham to every daughter the daughter of abraham to every subject every citizen of the kingdom of god the subjects of the almighty the lord says you are loosed from your state of inability what you are not able to do before you'll go out and you'll do you live a newness of life in jesus name Every chain that bound you, all the chains, they are shattered tonight in Jesus' name. Sickness, you are loose from sickness. Insanity, you are loose from insanity. And the bondage of sin, the cords of sin, that you couldn't get yourself out of, you are loose tonight. Total freedom, total liberation for everyone. As you believe in the Lord tonight, in Jesus' name, I am loosed. I am liberated. I'm free. The thing you have experienced before, negative, negative things tonight, they vanish away in Jesus' name. A great privilege for everyone tonight. Because whosoever, whosoever, whosoever will believe in the Lord tonight, miracle of losing them, letting them go, that miracle will happen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord brings the liberation, the salvation, the redemption, the forgiveness, it brings it right now. And then he has that sharp sword that cuts all your chains, all your shackles, everything that cuts everything away. And you want that freedom, that redemption, that forgiveness now, wherever you are, you raise up your hand. Anyone, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's happening right now. It's of that hand. All the iniquity, all the sin, all the transgression, you could not set yourself free from. The Lord has brought that liberation, that salvation tonight. It's of that hand. If there is sin of the hand, anywhere you are, please stand up so that we can recognize that you are there and you will be the recipient, the receiver of this prayer for salvation. Prayer for liberation. Because the Son has come to set you free. Set you free. Set you free. And you are free tonight. Raise up your hand and stand up. Far the back. Far on the sides. In the front, in the middle, on the sides, everywhere. 
you will not miss the salvation today as Zacchaeus did not miss his salvation today. His salvation come to this heart and to this house. I'm praying with you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for all the sons of the kingdom, all the subjects of the Almighty, all those who come to put their heart, their life under the Lordship and the Saviorhood of Christ. I pray, Lord, forgive their sins in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, cleanse them from all their iniquity and transgression in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the bondage of sin that made them compulsorily to be doing things they even know they shouldn't be doing. Break all the shackles and break all the yoke. Loose them like break them in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness with their heart that as Jesus has said, Salvation has come to their hearts. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Salvation has come. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they will interact with you. Please interact and cooperate together properly. We we'll call on our overseer moderating tonight uh, to lead us during this time. And now, after we finish this session, I'll come back. You're loose already from sickness. I just pronounce it and then it is done. Amen. If you are happy, the Lord has lose you from the bondage of sin. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Now, the counselors are there with you. They are coming to help you so that you will enjoy this freedom the Lord has given to you. So feel free. Give your correct names, address. Write in capital letters. Correct phone number. Now you are free. Don't tell lies again. You are now a temple of God. Allow the Spirit of God to live in you. So please, feel free. Counselors, move in. If counselors have not come to you, tell them, I raised my hand up. You have not attended to me. Please, counselors, can we do that? Get their correct names, address, phone numbers. It must be 11 digits. 11 digits. Please, feel free and do that. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ, after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect. Below your player, click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ. Send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to the number I'm going to mention now. Plus 234 I repeat, plus 234 For those online and those who watched through television or listening, listening through the radio, Please do that. Counselors, move. 
And after counseling, after writing your name, they will give you a material to also help you and assist you. So feel free. Counselors, let's do that quickly. There will be a special meeting, lunch hour with Jesus. For all those who gave their life to Christ, here, tomorrow at 3 p.m. at the back of this hall, this, this arena, back of the arena, the extreme back. We're waiting for you there. Tomorrow, come there. Also, there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 5th November, 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. A pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Also for those who gave their life to Christ here, Bini Believers Banquet will be on Sunday, 5th November, 2023 at Deeper Life Bible Church, 153 Ekewan Road, Bini City. Please take note. Counselors, please, let's be up and doing. While the counseling is going on, there are some activities or assignments we shall carry out this night. I'll mention the assignments. Number one, we're going to make requests. And after the request, we shall receive. And after receiving, like what the woman did, that was loose from infirmity, she rejoiced and she praised the Lord. So we also rejoice tonight and then report back to God what he has done for us. That's the three, if four things we are going to do. You will make requests. Make your request known to God. What do you want God to do for you? After that, the man of God will come and pray for us. And you will receive your miracle. And after receiving your miracle, you will rejoice. By singing, by worshipping God, by praising God. And then you will report what the Lord has done. Return the glory to God by giving testimony. So none of us will leave this assignment undone. And none of us will do it haphazardly. You make requests. The man of God prays. You receive your miracle. You run away. No. We fulfill the fall. Nobody should go. After receiving, we all rejoice together. We worship God. We sing. We praise the name of the Lord. And then we we'll come out and report what the Lord has done. Return the glory to God. Tell God, this is what you've done. And let everybody hear what the Lord has done. That's what we are going to do. For me, I've made up my mind. I will complete the assignment. Four of them. I don't know about you. If you have made up your mind, to complete the assignment, then once you make a request and the man of God prayed for you and you receive your miracle, you don't run out. You rejoice with us. And then you report what you have received. That's what we are going to do. Counselors, if you are true, please signify. Counselors, if you are true, indicate. We are waiting for signal. From our counselors. If you are true, please indicate. The supervisors, we are waiting. From my extreme left, if you are true, can we get the signal? From the middle here, if you are true, give all the signal. And then from my street light, right? If you are true also, can I get the signal? 
Okay. I've seen the choristers returning to their seats. Now we're going to stand. Remember the four assignments we're going to carry out. You make your request. The convener, the man of God is ready to pray for you. You will receive. And then you will rejoice and report. As you stand, you open your mouth and start making a request. What do you want God to do for you? You will not be left behind. You will not be. You will not go without your miracle. The man of God is already here loaded. The hour has come for you to receive from the Lord. Everybody say amen. I request. Say that. I receive. I rejoice. I report and give testimony. It will lose you tonight. Set you free tonight. Every infirmity, every sickness, every yoke, every chain, or the shackles broken away from your life. This up one hand. Did the other hand where you have the challenge, your miracle, vibration, is here right now. And at the final, amen, you get out of that wheelchair. You drop those crutches. Then you open your eyes and look around and lo and behold, you can see. And then you check the swelling. It's dropped off. Gone away. You check where you are the problem. The problem that was tied to you all these many years. All those problems are gone. Yeah. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we come to you in that name that can never fail. We pray in the name of Jesus and in the power anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we know the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost will never fail. Everyone tonight, you're loosed in Jesus' name. That spirit of insanity, the lunatic, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Whatever is troubling your head, water head, whatever, I pray every strange spirit, spirit of infirmity, come out of that head in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you touch those blind eyes, loose them, and let them go with good sight, with clear sight. I pray the blindness in your eyes. Vanish away in Jesus' name. The deaf and the dumb. You are not deaf anymore. The Lord sets you free. And I pray that the dumbness and the deafness, everything will vanish away now in Jesus' name. That goiter, I command you, vanish away in Jesus' name. The swelling of fibroid in the tummy, melt away in Jesus' name. And here, yeah, causing you discomfort and pain, I command that and here, yeah, vanish away in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, cancer be healed right now. Also be healed right now. And every form of pain and sickness or plague in your body, you are loose in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, the Lord has healed you. Here at the Alpha location, there online, everywhere, Healing for everyone. Yeah. Deliverance for everyone. Yeah. 
manifestation of your power for everyone you are loosed you are free you are liberated confirmation in every life in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord it is done in jesus name we pray the miracle is there already you are loosed now you can stand up and do what you are not able to do before you hear it